up to 90% of visible facial aging among people with lighter skin tones is due to exposure to sunlight. Those with darker skin are relatively protected due to their built-in melanin sunscreen, but they're still affected. Uh, sun damage in darker skin tends to be less about wrinkles and more about pigmentation issues, such as uneven skin tones, dark patches, and small dark bumps on the face. Ever wished you could slow down the hands of time and maintain a youthful glow? In this video, we'll be joining Dr. Michael Greger, a renowned physician and author of How Not to Die, to explore the science of anti-aging and unlock the secrets to a younger-looking you. Dr. Greger is a champion for evidence-based approaches to longevity. Today, we'll be tackling the crucial role of sun protection. Sun exposure is a major factor in how you look. Dr. Greger will delve into the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation and explain how to protect your skin effectively. Learn about the best sunscreens and explore alternative sun protection strategies to keep your skin healthy and radiant for years to come. This video will equip you with powerful sun protection tips, setting you on a path to a naturally younger looking you. Now let's let Dr. Greger tell the importance of sun protection as an anti-aging strategy. Dermatologists now agree that there's nothing more important to slow the signs of aging than to protect your skin from the sun. To illustrate, here's a dramatic photo of a trucker who spent decades getting more sun on the left side of his face through his driver's side window, reminiscent of a Batman villain. Tell us more about the effects of the sun and other bad habits on the skin. Factors like sun exposure and smoking can make us look up to 11 years older. Uh, compare that to extensive cosmetic surgery, a facelift and a neck lift, and removing excess skin from both upper and lower eyelids, and a forehead lift, which combined can make us look about eight years younger. So a healthy lifestyle may work even better. What can we do to protect ourselves? Consider the single most important practice for maintaining youthful skin, the daily application of sunscreen, and taking other protective measures like wearing a hat. All the other things you can do for your skin pale in comparison, especially for those with pale skin. When should we adopt these practices? Protecting your skin from the sun should be a lifelong endeavor. Uh, this can involve applying sunscreen, wearing sun protective clothing, hats, and sunglasses, and avoiding direct sunlight during the peak hours of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and instead seeking shady, covered areas. What about sun bathing? Sunbathing is frowned upon even with sunscreens like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide that offer broad spectrum protection against both UVA and UVB rays. Uh, we now know that other wavelengths, such as near infrared, that are not covered by sunscreens also contribute to skin aging. Men and women who use tanning beds. And how about tanning beds? Men and women who use tanning beds appear significantly older than those who don't, and white women who sunbathe appear years older than they actually are, similar to what is seen with smoking. Tell us about sunscreen. Regular use of sunscreen can arrest visible signs of skin aging, including biopsy-proven reductions in UV-related skin damage. But are there interventional trials proving sunscreen can prevent cancer? Yes! What's the proof that sunscreen works? Organ transplant recipients are highly susceptible to skin cancers because they have to be given immune suppressants to prevent organ rejection. A group of 120 organ recipients were equally informed about sun protection measures, but half were given free broad-spectrum SPF 50 plus sunscreen for daily application to their head, neck, forearms, and hands. After two years, there were nine new basal carcinomas in the control group versus only two in the sunscreen group. Now, that sounds good, but it may have just been a fluke. In contrast, there was a highly significant difference in the proportion of patients who got new invasive squamous cell carcinoma, eight new cases in the control group versus zero in the sunscreen group. But wait until you hear about what happened to their actinic keratoses, the precancerous growths that can turn into skin cancer. They all started out covered in them, a total of 191 detected in each group. In the subsequent 24 months, the control group developed 82 new ones. How many did the sunscreen group develop? Negative 102. More than 100 precancerous growths in the sunscreen group spontaneously regressed and vanished completely, compared to 82 new growths developing in the control group without a single one disappearing. Their bodies, even in their immunocompromised state, could heal itself 
once it just stopped being bombarded with so many cancer-causing rays. Any other studies? Other randomized control trials have shown similar findings, but generalizability is limited. The studies all used high-risk populations, for example, those living in subtropical climates or with a personal history of precancerous lesions. So cancer prevention efficacy in the general population would be expected to be less. On the other hand, the studies could also have underestimated the impact since they were relatively short-term, not exceeding four years, and ethically had to allow the control group participants to slather on their own sunscreen, which would dilute the difference between groups. Please clarify the difference between UVA and UVB and the effects on cancer. I understand that there are studies supporting the use of high SPF sunscreen. UVA rays are primarily responsible for skin aging, whereas UVB are the rays that cause sunburn. But a broad-spectrum sunscreen covering both is recommended since both types of UV contribute to cancer risk. To prevent skin cancer, the American Academy of Dermatology recommends sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or higher, but an SPF even as low as 15 can help prevent skin aging. How do we know? Because it's been put to the test. Despite the widespread belief that the use of sunscreen would prevent skin aging, all we had was data on hairless mice. That is, until 10 years ago. 900 adults were randomized either to years of daily sunscreen use or to continue with their own discretionary use. It was considered unethical to withhold protection by giving people placebo sunscreen. In the end, 77% of the recommended daily sunscreen group were applying sunscreen at least three to four days per week, compared with only 33% in the discretionary use group. Uh, would that be enough of a difference to make a difference? Yes, there was significantly less skin aging in the instructed daily use group. In fact, they suffered no detectable increase in skin aging over the four and a half year study. The researchers concluded regular sunscreen use retards skin aging in healthy middle-aged men and women. How do we apply a sunscreen? For maximum effectiveness, sunscreen needs to be applied properly, which apparently rarely happens in the real world. In a study of nearly 5,000 skiers and snowboarders, almost no one, only about 4%, were fully compliant with sunscreen recommendations. First, there's the amount. The FDA standard is 2 mg per square centimeter. What does that mean? Use the teaspoon rule. One teaspoon for your face, head, and neck. One for the front of your torso, another for your back, one teaspoon for each arm, and two teaspoons for each leg. That's a total of nine teaspoons. It's about the total volume equivalent of a golf ball or, or a shot glass to help you visualize it. What SPF should we use? Unfortunately, the average sunscreen user may only apply a quarter of the recommended amount. This is why high SPF sunscreens are often recommended, like you know, 50 plus SPF. Although the FDA recommends a minimum SPF of only 15 to prevent skin cancer, under normal consumer conditions, even an SPF of 50 may effectively give you only an SPF of 12.5 because most people don't put on enough. Randomized, double-blind, head-to-head, split-face experiments where you're randomized to apply one sunscreen to one side of your face and another sunscreen to the other side show that in real-life use, SPF 100 plus sunscreen works significantly better than SPF 50 plus sunscreen. More than 50% of the participants were sunburned more on their SPF 50 plus side compared to only about 5% on their SPF 100 plus side. Are there downsides to using higher SPF? Now, a potential downside of higher SPF sunscreens is that they could provide a, a false sense of security. Those randomized to an SPF 30 sunscreen ended up spending more cumulative time in the sun than those receiving an SPF 10 sunscreen, as much as five times longer in some cases. Uh, what else? Well, uh, people tend to remember to use sunscreen on a sunny day at the beach, but sun protection is needed even on cloudy days, since the UV rays are not dampened as much as visible light. There's even a phenomenon known as cloud enhancement, where overcast skies can sometimes result in even more UV reaching the Earth's surface compared to clear skies. What about gray days? Uh, what else? Well, uh, people tend to remember to use sunscreen on a sunny day at the beach, but sun protection is needed even on cloudy days, since the UV rays are not dampened as much as visible light. There's even a phenomenon known as cloud enhancement, where overcast skies can sometimes result in even more UV reaching the Earth's surface compared to clear skies. How long should you wait before going outdoors after applying sunscreen? 
Sunscreen labels often suggest waiting at least 15 minutes after application before going outdoors, uh, but when put to the test, sunscreen was found to start working immediately, with the full effect apparent by minute 10. However, if water resistance is required, it may be prudent to wait the full 15 to 30 minutes after application before taking a dip. Is there a difference between waterproof and water-resistant sunscreens? The terms waterproof or sweatproof appear to be meaningless marketing, as no difference in retention was noted between quote-unquote waterproof products and those that were merely labeled water-resistant. Both were better than non-water-resistant products, though, which lost nearly all their protective effects within 20 minutes of water immersion. How often should we reapply? The suggestion that sunscreen should be reapplied every two to three hours only applies under conditions in which it is rinsed off by water or sweat or rubbed off by friction from clothing or sand. Even after allowing sunscreen to dry first for 20 minutes, between 15 and 60% of its protective effect can be lost after contact with sand. Otherwise, if the recommended amount is applied and the sunscreen layer is not disturbed, SPF can be maintained for as long as eight hours. Remember. Your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands. It's just one bite away.